In this video, we're going to dive into how to store phone numbers in your database using Django. Now, phone numbers are tricky because they come in all sorts of different formats. And that means there's a lot of different validation rules that could apply to your model fields and your form fields in a Django application. So in this video, we're going to learn about a Django package that helps with this problem, and it's called Django phone number field. We have the GitHub page for this package open just now, and we're going to dive into how to use that in this video. Now, you can see in the description here that this is a library that interfaces with Python phone numbers to validate pretty print and convert phone numbers. And Python phone numbers is a port of Google's lib phone number library and that powers Android's phone number handling. So this package will bring that functionality to the Django ecosystem. And it brings a number of utilities. Here we have three different phone number fields, one that you can apply to your model classes for the database, another one here that can be applied to form fields in order to validate the forms that you have that use phone numbers. And we also have a serializer field that can be used with Django REST framework. And we're going to see how to apply these to our Django application in this video. If you look below here, we've got an installation section. And there are two different pip install commands you can apply here. Firstly, we have pip install Django phone number field, phone numbers. And that is the full package. And below that, we have a phone numbers light alternative. This has a lower memory footprint. And we're going to install this particular one here. So let's go to VS Code. And we're going to start a command line and install that into our application. Once that's installed, we're going to add this to our installed apps. So what we need to do is add phone number field to the installed apps that's in your settings.py file. So let's go to settings and we'll add that to this list here and we'll add it to the bottom. Now that we've done that, we're going to go to models.py and we're going to extend Django's user model. And the reason we're going to extend that is to add a phone number field to the default user model. So let's start by importing the abstract user from Django's auth.models package. And we're going to create a class called user here that extends from that abstract user. Now all we need to do here is add a single field to the user and that's for the phone number. So we're going to use that phone number field that we saw from this package, specifically the model field. We're going to use that and we're going to apply that to this user class that extends the abstract user. So to do that, we can scroll down in this documentation and we can import the phone number field from the phone number field dot model fields package. So let's copy that import into our application at the top here. So now we have access to this phone number field. What we're going to do is we're going to add a field to our model called phone number and that's going to be an instance of this phone number field. So we instantiate it like that to create that field in our model class. And because we're changing the default user model, we also need to add a setting to our settings.py file. So let's go to the bottom. And what we're going to say is the auth user model is going to be equal to core.user. And that's referencing this new model that we've created here. And that setting auth user model tells Django that this is the user model we want to use in this application. Now that we've done that, we can run the make migrations command and then we can migrate these changes and create the database. So now that the database has been created, we can right click and open that database in Visual Studio Code if we have the SQLite Explorer installed. So we can then go to the database and I'm going to expand this out a little bit. And here we can see the different tables that have been created by that migration. And we're going to look specifically at the core user table. And as well as all the default fields that come with Django's user model, we also have this phone number field that is of type varchar. What this means is that when we create the phone number field in our model, it's going to represent the phone number as a string in the database. That's the varchar data type. It's basically a string. And because it represents it as a string, we can actually look at the source code for the phone number field in this package. If we go to the source code, we can see that the phone number field is actually a subclass of the Django models.car field. So that's all it does. It stores the phone number as a varchar in the database, but it also adds a bunch of validation and other features that we're going to see in a second. So to demonstrate how this works, let's go to the Django shell and let's create a user in the database. Now, if we look at the phone number field of that user that we've created, we don't have a phone number. By default, that's just an empty string. Now, let's say we wanted to set the phone number. So user.phone number is equal to test. Obviously, that's an invalid phone number because it's not a number, that's just a string. So if we then try to access that phone number, as we see here, we get an invalid phone number. So even though phone number is a subclass of car field, it doesn't allow us to represent a phone number using any string. It gives us that validation and it tells us that that is an invalid phone number. So let's now create a valid phone number such as this one with the plus 44 area code. So that's a UK mobile number. If we then access the phone number, you see we get back a different object. We don't get an invalid phone number. Instead, what we get is a phone number instance. 
It has a bunch of fields attached to it, such as the country code, which it detects from the input, which is plus 44. It has the national number, which is this component here of the phone number, and also a bunch of other fields that might be helpful in specific circumstances. And we can save that normally to the database as so, and then when we inspect the table in the SQLite Explorer, we see we have this user and it has a phone number here stored as a varcar with the plus 44 as well as the national number here. So that's how Django phone number field stores the phone number in the database. Let's now see how it works with a form. I'm going to close the SQLite Explorer and we're going to open the forms.py file. So let's import the user model from that models.py file and we're also importing forms from Django. Now what we're going to do here is create a model form based on this user model and we're going to do that here using a class called user form that inherits from the forms.model form class and within that we're going to define a meta class and we're going to link that to the user model and we're going to specify which fields we want to see on the form. So let's say we want to see these three fields, the username, the password and the phone number. And I'm going to add a widget here for the password. That's going to be a forms.password input widget. And that's going to protect the password so that it's not visible when you're typing. And finally, we're going to override the save method so that when a user is saved to the database, it's going to set the password, which basically means it's going to hash the input and turn that into something secure that can't be read by anybody. So now that we've done that, let's go to the views.py file. And what we're going to do here is add this form to our view. So at the top, we're going to import the user form that we've just created. And then we're going to add that to our context with a key of form. So we instantiate the user form and that's then available in this index.html template. So if we now go to index.html, we've just got a simple template that extends a base template. And all it says at the moment is hello. We're going to delete that. I'm going to replace it with the form. So let's create a form element here and we'll close that off below. Now this form, when it's submitted, is going to send a post request to this view here index. And that basically means it's going to go to this function here. So we're going to process that request later on. But for now, let's go back to index.html. Now, when you're sending a post request, when you're submitting a form, you need to include the CSRF token by default. So we'll include that in the template here. And we're going to render the form here, which we have in our context. And we're going to do that very simply as paragraph tags for each field. And below that, we're going to add a submit button. So let's run the Django development server and we're going to go to this page to see the form. And you can see this form is very basic. It's not got much in the way of styling, but it's got three fields, one for the username, one for the password and one for the phone number. And it's this phone number field we're going to focus on in this video. And we're going to see how Django phone number field validates the input. So let's now change up our view to allow it to handle the post request when the form is submitted. Let's go to views.py. And we're going to check in this view if the request.method is equal to a post request. And if it is, we're going to instantiate the form with the request.post data that's been sent to the server. Then we check if the form is valid using the form.isValid function. And because it's a model form, we can then call form.save if the form is valid. And once it's been saved, we might want to redirect. So we return a redirect, which we'll import from the Django.shortcuts at the top. And we're going to redirect to the index URL. So we're going to use the reverse function, which we need to import as well. And we'll import that at the top from Django.URLs, import reverse. Now for the reverse function, index refers to a named URL, which is this one here. And the reverse function will change that into a proper URL, which will then be the source to redirect to. Now, if the form is not valid, we're going to change up what's rendered here. We're going to add the invalid form to the context, and we're going to return the template with the form attached. And in the case of a normal get request, we simply process the form as we did before. So let's now go back to our page and we're going to refresh this page. And what I'm going to do now is try and submit a new user and password with an invalid phone number such as test. And we can see when we try to do that, that Django phone number field prevents us from being able to submit that form. And it gives us the message, enter a valid phone number and gives an example. So what's happening here is that this form.isValid function is returning false because the phone number field is not valid. And because we're using a model form for this form here that inherits from the user model, it knows that the phone number should be an instance of the forms.phone number field. And therefore it comes with all of that validation built in. So using this package, it's very easy to build forms and models that validate these phone numbers and prevent invalid phone numbers being submitted to your database. So let's try this one more time. We're going to try it with a valid phone number this time. If we submit that form, we see we get back the same form after and that appears to have went through successfully. If we inspect the terminal, we're getting the 302 redirect here. Let's check the database to see if that's been added to this table. And we can see now that we do have a second user in this table. 
And if we scroll to the right hand side, you see that the phone number has been entered successfully. And we can see that we have also successfully hashed the password and that's because in our forms.py, we're overriding the save method and we use the set password function. Now that's not a focus of this video, but it's useful to know that you can take the raw input, the password and hash it using the user.setPassword function. So I think that this example highlights how easy it is to store phone numbers that are valid using this package. Now, if we didn't have a model form, you can actually add a phone number field explicitly. Of course, in a model form, it's inferred from the type of field on the model. But if we had a forms.form class instead, then what we could do, if I just clear this input, we could import from the library the phone number field from the form fields module. And then we could add that to our class like that. So this time we explicitly say that the phone number is equal to a form fields dot phone number field. And we can also pass keyword arguments such as required equals false to that. So that's the gist of this package. It offers some very useful utilities. There's also a serializer if you're using Django REST frameworks and creating APIs where you want to validate phone numbers. But to finish off this video, let's see some settings that are offered by this package. If we go back to the GitHub page, just below the basic usage section, we have a settings section. Now there's a few different settings available here. First of all, we have the phone number database format setting, and this refers to different formats for which you can store phone numbers. For example, E164, that's a particular format for numbers. There's an international format, a national format, which requires you to set another setting here below, which is the phone number default region. This is a two letter country code to indicate how to interpret regional phone numbers. So for example, if you were building an application in the USA, and you only wanted to deal with US phone numbers, you might set this phone number default region to US. And if you do that, you could then store phone numbers with that format in the database using the national database format. And finally, there's a phone number default format, and that provides string formatting of phone numbers in your application. So just to quickly show this, if I go to settings.py, I could maybe set two of these settings at the bottom. If I was developing an application just for UK users, I might want to put these two settings. Firstly, we set the database format to national, and secondly, we set the default region to Great Britain. So that's all for this video. We've learned about the Django phone number field package and how easy it is to store phone numbers in the proper format in our database using this package. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next video.